Math 10 Relations Lesson 2 Linear Relations. There are three key terms that we've got to know for this particular topic. The first one is linear relation. Well, what is a linear relation? Well, linear means straight. Therefore, a linear relation is one where the relation forms a straight line when the data is plotted. The second term is called discrete data. Discrete data is data that when we graph it, it is not connected. It is just a series of points. So we would not have a line between the points. The third one is continuous data. Continuous data is where we do connect the points or we do draw a line between them. Part B, examples. Relations in real life situations. Dave decides to set off fireworks for Halloween. Every minute he sets off four bottle rockets. A. Is the relationship between the total number of bottle rockets and the number of minutes linear or nonlinear? Explain. So, here's what we know. Every minute, Dave is releasing the same amount. So, what does that mean? There is a constant amount being released each minute. Therefore, we would call that linear because it's the same. B. Assign a variable to the number of minutes and the total number of bottle rockets. Which is independent variable and which is the dependent variable? Well, first of all, the total number of minutes, I would wind up giving that description time. Or I would use t as my variable. Second, number of bottle rockets, number of rockets I would use n. Now how do we know which one of these is dependent and which is the independent variable? Well we ask ourselves which variable depends on the other. Does the time depend on the number of bottle rockets or does the number of bottle rockets depend on the time? And the answer to that is that the number of bottle rockets depends on the amount of minutes that have gone by. After one minute it would be four, after two it would be eight. Therefore, the independent variable would be the number of minutes or time, and the dependent variable would be the number of rockets or n. Create a table of values for this relation. Well, with the table of values, we get to create our own points to start with. The easiest point to start with is zero minutes. Now, if I've got zero minutes, how many bottle rockets are being have been let off? Well, that would be zero because it's the start. The next easiest point would be to go up by one. So one minute. After one minute, he will have let off four bottle rockets. Two minutes eight bottle rockets, three minutes, 12 bottle rockets, and four minutes, 16 bottle rockets. D, graph the relation, is the data continuous? So, do we draw a line here? So let's start with, what is my dependent variable? Well, that would be the number of rockets. So, my y, I'm gonna put number of rockets. What do I know? My number of rockets goes up to 16 and it starts at zero. So because I've got eight spaces, I think the easiest way for me to do this is to go up by twos. So that's going to be zero, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, and 14, 16. My independent value is minutes, so that's time. So I'm going to put time across the bottom. That is measured in minutes. And again, I've got eight spaces, and I'm going up to four. So I'm going to start at zero, and I'm going to go up by two spots each time. So that's going to be one minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes. 
Now I have to plot my points. When my time is zero, my number of rockets is zero. When time is one, my number of rockets is four. When time is two, my number of rockets is eight. When time is minutes is three, my number of bottle rockets is 12. And finally, when the number of minutes is four, my number of bottle rockets is 16. So don't forget a title. This is time versus number of rockets. My last question is, is the data continuous? Continuous means I should draw a line. In order for that to happen, I have to have infinite points in between the given points. Now, time can be infinite, but the number of bottle rockets cannot. You cannot let off half a bottle rocket. Therefore, this is not continuous data and we would not draw a line. Identifying whether a relation is linear or nonlinear. So, which of the following is linear and explain why? Well, I'm looking at A and how do I know if a table of values or a series of points is linear? Well, I look for constant change. So, I'm going to write this down as a table of values. So, my x value for my first point is 10. My y value is 12. For my second point, I have 15 and 4. My sec third point, I have 20 and negative 4. My fourth value, I have 25 and negative 12. And finally, my last point, I have 30 and negative 20. Now, I look for constant change, which means going from one point to the next, my x values go up by the same amount, my y values change by the same amount. So, to go from 10 to 15, I'm going to go up by 5. 15 to 20, an increase of 5. 20 to 25, an increase of 5. And finally, 25 to 30, an increase of 5. So, that's constant. But it's got to be constant for both. So to go from 12 to negative to 4, I'm going down 8. To go from 4 to negative 4, again, I'm going down 8. To go from negative 4 to negative 12, I'm going down 8. And finally, to go from negative 12 to negative 20, again, I go down 8. Therefore, what do I know? This must be linear because we have constant change in both variables. B, what happens if I'm given a graph? Well, this is usually the most obvious of all of them. Why? Because a linear relation is one that is forms a straight line. Since this line is not straight, I know it's not linear. Finally, C, when I'm given an equation, how do I know whether it's linear? Well, I look at the degree of the equation, or in other words, I look at the exponents on the variables. If the exponent on each variable is one, then I know it's linear. If the variable is, if the exponent on the variable is anything but one, then I know it is not linear. Therefore, since the exponent on both y and x is one, I know that this represents a linear relation. Example number three. There is a linear relationship between the number of dogs in a kennel and the number of paws that need to be cleaned. Which of the following represents the model for this relation? Explain. Well, first of all, what do we know about the relationship between the number of paws and the number of dogs? Well, the number of paws is going to be four times as much as the number of dogs because there are four paws on most dogs. So when I look at A, what is this saying? This is saying that 
the number of paws is going to be equal to the number of dogs increased by 4. So think about that. That means if I have one dog, 1 plus 4 is 5. So there would be 5 paws. Again, this is definitely not representing this situation. I'm looking at B. What does this represent? It means that the number of dogs divided by 4 will give me the number of paws. Well, let's think about that again. If I have one dog, that means I have one quarter paws. Again, this is definitely not correct. C. I'm noticing that this is a table of values where I have the number of dogs and the number of paws listed. Apparently here I have two dogs that have six paws. So what does that mean? That means each dog has three paws. Since we know dogs have four paws, I know that this has to be wrong as well. Finally, I'm looking at D. And what do I notice? When I have zero dogs, I have zero paws. Yep, that makes sense. When I have three dogs, I have 12 paws. Well, since each dog has four paws, three times four is 12. Six times four is 24. Nine times four is 36. Therefore, all of the values match the situation. Therefore, this must be the correct answer.